Okay, let's uh, get started. This is 21C. Uh, this should be the first um, video hooked up with uh, the notes that I have on my 21C website, um, which you can find if you don't already know it. Um, if you just, the easiest way to find it, it's a Google site. But if you just search my name, Grant Acosta, A-C-O-S-T-A, um, it should come up first. And um, these are just the notes I already had in place from 21C, um, but in the absence of a class, it's kind of nice to have somebody talk through it as well. So that's what we're going to do. Um, probably going to break it up into shorter videos as well, just because it's kind of long to um, watch an hour at a time video. So um, I'm just going to make this first one a little bit shorter, um, just get the idea out of what a sequence is. Um, which is the beginning point of 21C. Okay, so you probably recognize those two words from 21B, converge or diverge. Um, and remember for integrals in 21B, what it meant for an integral to converge was that the value of the integral, which had something to do with infinity, uh, came out to be a finite number. And by diverge with integrals, that usually meant that the area we were discussing uh, was infinitely large. So it didn't approach a number. Um, we actually will expand that term diverge uh, with one of my examples coming up. Okay, so for example, so it is, in this context, we're studying sequences now. And all a sequence is, is just a list of numbers. So this formula, a sub n equals 2n over n plus 1, is giving you a formula to generate numbers. We're going to start with just n being 1. So when your subscript is 1, that could be, that's the first term in the sequence. We could denote that as a sub 1. And so n just has a value of 1. And if you plug in 1 into both places, you get 2 over 2. a sub 2, when n is 2, gives you 4 over 3. n is 3, you get 6 over 4, 8 over 5, 10 over 6. And just to, this, this has no end, so I kind of just skipped a bunch and I looked at my hundredth term, which if you plug in 100, you'd get 200 over 101. And my thousandth term would be 2,000 over 1,001. And this is just to give you a sense then of, okay, when we say converge or diverge, what we're talking about is if we continue this pattern of numbers forever to infinity, do the values of these fractions start to approach a finite number? And hopefully you can see that, yeah, okay, 200 over 101 is pretty close to 2. 2,000 over 1,001 is even closer to 2. So it appears that the sequence values are approaching 2. But what's the ultimate test is not the hundredth term or the thousandth term, but the infinite term. So what we will do to really prove that this sequence converges to two is we're going to take the limit of this formula as n goes to infinity. Uh, we, we did a lot of limits in 21a. You did a few in 21b when we were doing uh, improper integrals. So remember the rules, if the powers are the same, then you can just literally look at the ratio of the coefficients of n, 2 to 1. So your answer would be 2. Of course, you could use L'Hopital's rule as well. Take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. So we get the answer of 2, which is what we suspected these terms were starting to approach. And sure enough, that's what our sequence converges to. Okay, so let's look at another example. Slide this up here. Uh, now, it's, it's almost the same formula, but I squared the 2n squared. And by doing that, what we see is if you start plugging in some of the terms here, this would correspond to a sub 1, right? That's n equals 1. This is a sub 2 and so forth. You can see what happens now is the value of my fractions are getting bigger. The numerator is getting bigger than the denominator. Of course, that's because we're squaring it, right? So if we had to make a guess, 
if these fractions keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it seems like the terms are going to get infinitely big. Ultimate test, of course, would be to take the limit as n goes to infinity. And that's an infinity over infinity limit. Um, but remind yourself that when the power of the numerator is bigger than the denominator, you're generating an infinitely bigger term, an infinitely bigger infinity on the top than on the bottom. Uh, which would show you that your terms are going to get really, really big. Of course, so here I decided to use L'Hopital's rule as a way to show that as well. The derivative of the top is 4n, the derivative of the bottom is 1, and if you plug in infinity, you're going to get infinity. Since we get infinity, then we would say that this sequence diverges, which is pretty much the same as with uh, improper integrals. Okay. Let's look at another example. Maybe I'll do this this time. Okay. So now my formula, notice it looks pretty much the same as the first example that where I had 2n over n plus 1, but now I have this negative 1 to the n plus 1 term. And what that does, if you start with 1, negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 is negative 1 squared, which is just positive 1. And then you get 2 over 2 uh, for your first term. But when n is 2, this becomes negative 1 to the third power, which is negative 1. And then you plug in 2 there, and you get 4 thirds. When n is 3, negative 1 to the fourth is positive 1. And then plugging in 3 here, you get 6 over 4. So can you, what you can see is that this negative 1 to the n plus 1 actually just acts like a, a sign changer. So every even term is going to come out to be uh, a positive, I'm sorry, even number term is going to come out to be a negative number, and every odd term is going to come out to be an even term. Okay, so it's going to just cause the numbers to oscillate. Okay, now what, one of the things we did on the first example was we went out to a big number. Like if you look at your hundredth term, you get 200 over 101, which is really close to positive 2. But notice my next very next term, negative 2 over 2 over 102, is really close to negative 2. The term after this one would be really close to positive 2, and then the next one would be close to negative 2. So in some sense, we could talk about your even number terms would get closer to positive 2, and your odd number terms would get closer to negative 2. So there's some sense of convergence there. However, when we talk about sequences, for the sequence to converge, it, the terms would have to approach a single number. And because this sequence doesn't approach a single number, we're going to have to say that this sequence diverges. Once again, however, the ultimate test would be, what is the answer to that limit? Uh, we know that this part right here approaches 2, this part of the formula. But this is going to make the terms oscillate between plus or minus 2. And if you go back to 21a, first quarter calculus, what happens when we take a limit that it approaches two different numbers? We have to say that the limit doesn't exist. And if the limit doesn't exist, then we're going to have to say that this sequence diverges because the terms oscillate between plus or minus 2. Okay, so this is just a short video talking about what we mean by a sequence converging and diverging. Um, so there's two ways a sequence could diverge, right? It could diverge because the terms get infinitely big or because it just, the, the terms don't approach a single number. They approach maybe two numbers because it's oscillating. All right, um, I'm gonna add another video and we'll do some more complicated examples of sequences.